Hello people, I'm Ben Huang. Welcome back to my channel. Before we get started with the video, please remember to press the like button, turn on notifications, and subscribe to my channel. Today, I'm going to introduce you guys to a talk by Robert Sapolsky, a professor of biology and neurological sciences at Stanford University and a researcher in the field of neuroendocrinology. Now, let's get started with his talk called uh, The Biology of Our Best and Worst Selves. Provocatively speaking, Sapolsky begins the talk by saying that as humans, we are an utterly confused species when it comes to violence. Namely, just as he mentioned, we might be in favor of gun control and against death penalty, whilst we, however, enjoy shooting people in laser tag and watch violent movies. Concurrently, we are capable of conducting bloody, inhumane acts such like the Holocaust and be extremely altruistic and compassionate creatures. We don't hate violence nonetheless, Sapolsky argues. We only despise the wrong type. In addition, Sapolsky states, in order to thoroughly understand the behaviors of our best and worst selves and all the indistinctive, unclear ones in between, it is not just about the mechanism of electrical signals passing from our brain to our muscles, but also more importantly, the meaning behind people's actions. For instance, pulling a trigger in some circumstances can be heroic and sacrificial, but in other cases, terrifying and appalling. Beyond that, Professor also says, uh, says, just by tracing back certain genes and child experiences is not going to take us anywhere, as there is no behavior that has solely one level of causality. To elaborate, suppose he illustrated an example of misidentifying a person for holding a phone for a knife, which resulted in the individual being shot as a consequence. And to know what, what led to this behavior, there are numerous factors that we have to take into account, i.e. everything from environmental to psychological. And here, as you can see, is the summarization of all the factors that supposedly stated, which are our physical and mental state, testosterone and stress levels, past traumas, uh, brain condition, especially the prefrontal cortex, experiences growing up, including when we are still in our mother's womb, and even our ancestors' experiences, as it could influence um, the values that we were taught and how we were raised. In general, suppose you suggest to understand a behavior, we have to look at all these variables that I have listed here, alongside what just happened from a second to millions of years ago. The 65-year-old researcher maintains that we should be highly cautious of our words before we can confidently say what exactly is the cause of a particular behavior, especially if it is one that we're judging critically. Furthermore, things change and evolve, the same as our behavior, which could be influenced by the changing environment. He reminds us it can only take as short as a few seconds for changes in our behavior. Lastly, as opposed to the famous quote, those who don't study history are destined to repeat themselves. Sapolsky, argue, Sapolsky argues, those who don't study the history of human change and its biology are destined not to be able to repeat the glorious significant moments that have happened in history. Firstly, I would like to say that regarding what the American professor has said about taking numerous factors into consideration, it could be essentially concluded as uh, nothing is as simple as it looks. While there's no reason why we should judge a book merely based on its cover, this is exactly what most of us do. And just as Sapolsky argues, everything in life has more than one level of causality. In regard to behavior specifically, we have to be aware that there are multiple causes that can contrib contribute to the conduction of an individual's behavior, which I argue we most likely wouldn't know. Hence, apart from taking our ancestors' history and biology into account, more significantly and practically, we should approach what we see, for example, specific behavior from rational, logical, or even in some cases, generous perspective. What the reason being that, simply, it is highly likely that we do not know the exact reason behind others' actions and what they have possibly been through that may have resulted them being in such a way. Additionally, it is terribly rude to comment critically or likely on someone's actions, which they did not choose or intend to do. 
especially if it is an illness or disability. To take this even further, I even say, for a lot of us, it seems we voice our opinions too quickly, as it is way easier to express our feelings straight from our, straight from our heart and w- without evaluating it inside our head first. And in reality, we wouldn't want to miss an opportunity or uh, make a mistake on something that we shouldn't have mistaken, all due to our mis- misinterpretation and misunderstanding. On top of that, with, the res- with respect to what I have said specifically on as- observing the events that are happening around us from a logical view, this, I think, is the essence of science. That is, to look at all possible factors which may lead to a certain reaction from uh, an ob- objective, logical, and equal point of view. And I believe this is the type of mindset that we should all have in order to not to criticize what is happening around us carelessly. Moreover, it is merely by doing so, can we observe more comprehensively and hence reach the truth of the matter. That is to say, in a more practical sense, not only this way of thinking could be used in observing the things around us, but also in uh, experiments and discussions, for instance, seminars. And I have the opinion that when we begin to do this on a day-to-day basis, we can discover more sides of an argument uh, and look at things, an argument to look at things more holistically and hopefully even better, come up with better solutions, uh, decisions and solutions in life. Furthermore, I agree with both the iconic history quote that says, those who don't study history are destined to repeat themselves and suppose these point, those who don't study the history of human change are, and its biology are destined not to be able to repeat the glorious significant moments that happened in history. Nevertheless, I believe the purpose of studying history is more than solely memorizing the dates of important events. It is more importantly learning the lessons from those past events and famous people to find the causes of those events and the factors that result in the success or failure of an individual. In such a way, we wouldn't repeat mistakes that either we or others have made, as well as learn and apply the qualities that led to a famous people, a famous individual success to ourselves. On that note, based on what I've just said, I would also say if one thinks that memorizing, uh, memorizing dates of historical events is all there is to history, they are not only missing out on one of or even the most crucial element of history, but also one of the most valuable and useful tools for us to prevent failure and guide us to success in life. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more videos of TED Talk summaries and opinions like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.